about a year and a half before the pandemic started, I was um, working on building this little tiny house down in the woods and um, try to, you know, basically it became like a refuge, I guess. But um, I, I didn't really have any intentions other than just a place to kind of hang out or chill. Um, and so once a pandemic hit, um, you just kind of get, I went into this panic mode of like, what, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to work? You know, um, because the need to create is just always there. Um, so I started going down there. I didn't really have a camera with me and started exploring the pond. Uh, and it was fall, I guess. Um, and then I started just really taking the time to just kind of look at nature because, uh, uh, you know, all of a sudden we have all this time on our hands, you know. Um, so what really struck me was, you know, how the leaves, I guess, had layered into the pond, into the water, um, the depths, the different times of day, the way the shadows, the sunlight. So all of that kind of came into play. So all I had with me then was so I started taking a lot of these images with the phone. So a, a big part of what you see right here is just taken with the iPhone. And um, so I was just playing with a couple of different apps and then printing them myself. Uh, I have a large format printer. Um, so I'll scroll through these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant to tell you. Stop and ask me. It's just an iPhone 10. Yeah, yeah. And uh, nothing fancy. Yeah. And I think, you know, I was using a couple different apps. This was like a 10 type app. And um, I just to kind of tweak some things. Um, maybe hipstamatic, a couple of things here. And again, some of it is, um, I like the uh, degree of uncertainty. You, can, you don't really know you know, how things are really going to come together. Um, so uh, that was nice surprises as, as well. Um, when these particular pieces printed up, I'll, I'll go through here. Let me just, yeah. So these are a couple more of the little tiny house. Uh, and then this is kind of where I was starting to work inside and exploring some of the watercolors. Um, these images here kind of inspired doing the watercolors. And um, so I started kind of building things. Um, I liked the idea of bringing the, I was pulling leaves out of the pond and bringing them into, to, into the space to try to work. And um, I wanted to um, use the leaves into the artwork at some point. I didn't want to, I wanted to maybe use them to print with, you know, put ink on them or put the ink on the paper, press the leaf into it. But I didn't want it to look like arts and crafts where you're just laying the paper on there with the ink and, you know, there. So I started exploring more with that and using different textures. Um, I like the idea of just using a, one color to keep everything monochromatic. Um, it created more of a challenge, I guess, to to variate the shadows, um, that rich indigo um, was just perfect because uh, it had its own qualities and you never really knew exactly how it was gonna dry and finish out. So there were always these surprises. So I would paint and let it dry, come back to it, add more stuff. I was using, uh, uh, I used alcohol, salt, a lot of different kind of things to manipulate the water and the pigment and the uh, spontaneity of it and the uncertainty of it um, was really kind of nice surprises. Let's see, which way did I go? Yeah. Um, so these were a couple of first attempts with a painting and this one down here was kind of an attempt to, you know, duplicate kind of what I was seeing. But um, even though I liked some things, this depth and the shadows that was going on, it really wasn't where I wanted to go with it. And 
So then I took it outside and I got this little woodblock press and started pressing the leaves into the paper, doing a lot of different textures. Uh, Donny House in the snow. Um, this was, yeah, just, I would save the water. I would use the tinted water, you know, use everything. Uh, again, that's the first attempt. I narrowed these slides down to about four hours, so I'll go through them pretty fast. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so this is an attempt to you where you can see the leaves were sandwiched together. Um, you kind of get a positive and a negative effect from this, which, you know, each one kind of had its own kind of deal going. So it was kind of decide which one I wanted to use. And then I would go back in and overpaint. I also like the way the, uh, this chlorophyll or this dirt or whatever came off the leaves into the print. And that was kind of interesting as well. And then this is one, probably one of the only ones that I really kept as a leaf. Yeah. So again, these are some of the hipstamatic. I don't have this one in the show, but these will give you an idea of what inspired me to kind of do the painting, uh, looking at the depth of these things. Yeah. This is when it was freezing over, so the ice created a whole different uh, landscape. Um, and what's nice about this is um, I kind of come from a street photography background. Um, just kind of where you, wherever you are, you kind of, you know, work in the moment. Um, you just respond to the sun, the light, the shadows, everything right, you know, that decisive moment. And so this is kind of, you know, and that kind of framework of, of street photography as well. Um, I kind of feel like you can, you should be able to just like go out in your backyard and make, you know, make art. You don't have to go a thousand miles away or whatever, which it's great to go a thousand miles away, but I feel, I feel like, you know, there are so many things around here that we can use and look at. It's just learning to really see and really look. Um, some things I would do, and I'll get to that in a minute as well. I would have a location in mind that I knew might uh, warrant a certain type of image. Um, and then I would scout that location out for the time of day, see where the shadows. Yeah, I love the way that ice looks. Again, these were shot just with the phone. And I brought like, I had this, I had point and shoot cameras. And this is the Leica point and shoot camera. And the iPhone takes a better picture than that point and shoot camera. <laughs> and this was the pond. Yeah. Uh, I have a Canon um, 2000, 24 inch printer, yeah. And I had used Epson forever and ever and ever. And um, uh, I, don't know, I had a lot of problems with Epson, so I switched to Canon and uh, I'm happy. Yeah, it's a lot better. Uh, no. No, everything is pretty much um, right out of the camera. Um, I, you know, I, I print out of Photoshop, but I only use Photoshop really to print and maybe adjust light, dark, you know, tweak the colors a little bit or something like that. Yeah, I don't like to do. I don't like to do a lot of stuff, you know. I do everything manual, but I don't like to, you know, I don't like to mess with the camera. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, I'd like to keep everything pretty pure, but let's see. This app, 
this little streaking down at the top of that image, that was totally accidental. So I don't know where that came from, but it was kind of nice. So I kind of liked the way that worked. No, no, not at all. You know, I'd have to look at the setting. I don't know if it even shoots in raw. I, I don't know. The later ones do. I don't think it's shot in raw. I think it was just a high res JPEG. Yeah. But I was impressed with, you know, how it was looking. It was, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, I just got really into the reflections and it's those layers of leaves. What's interesting too is I went back a year, <clears throat> a year later, I went back the next fall and um, of course nature, you know, doesn't repeat itself. So the pond was completely different. I was going to try to shoot some more and the water levels had changed, the, lay, the way the leaves layered, they weren't there. So this year that I shot everything here was kind of like the premium, you know, what, you know, <clears throat> perfect storm away, everything came together because the next year it was, it was not, not what I was expecting. It, it didn't inspire me. <laughs> So the more and more the more I kept working on these, the more they would inspire different ideas as well. Uh, I'll get to the newer stuff too. Yeah. And this this was some newer uh, direction where I was shooting with this plastic camera. This is a medium format camera. It shoots 120 film. So um, during the pandemic, um, I had I have a dark room. I've always had a dark room, so I haven't used it in years. It just kind of got trashed, I guess. The mice and the wasps and ladybugs took it over and. So I thought, okay, I'm going to clean it all out. So I kind of stripped everything out of it and started again, repainted everything and got the dark room back to work. And so I started processing film. So that was a nice feeling again to get back in the dark room and work like with this little camera and some other cameras. So this was just kind of the start of um, getting back into processing film and yeah, you can still buy film. It's, um, I mean, it's expensive now. I mean, um, so I only buy it really to just work on projects that, you know, that I do myself. Um, it's just too expensive. Um, and this image, <clears throat> this image was shot with this camera. It's the one over on the wall over there. And it's a process of like, standing still and then taking a picture and then just clicking it like very little a couple of clicks take another picture click click well actually you're moving too you're like yeah when you move it you're like that click click so the results are pretty interesting um, and then you have this long negative um, to work with when you process it. So I have a scanner um, to scan the negatives so, um, and then print it up. So I thought it looked pretty good, printed up pretty large. Um, so you scanned the negative? Do what? You the negative? Yes, I scanned the negative, yeah. Um, so that's been a lot of fun to start working on that and get back in the dark room. Um, 
let's see. Yeah, there's another one. So that's a new star. Yeah, now that you're some of the. Yeah, this was a nice surprise too. When I saw these dark, these black shadows, I don't remember seeing that when I took this picture. And then when I came in, you know, to look at it later on the computer, I thought something was wrong with the image, but that was just the way those shadows looked when they reproduced. I thought, wow. Yeah. And they almost kind of took on like a watercolor effect as well. I love the way that grit and dirt came up in the images with the, the leaves and the, the decomposition of it. <clears throat> and when I'm in nature, I just, I like to just find things as they are. I don't, I don't move things around or touch anything. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like forensics, you know, don't, don't touch anything. Just, <laughs> I don't have gloves on, but you know, <laughs> so I think, yeah, this is more of the watercolors. So the watercolors were really not, once it got colder, I started working inside and just exploring more with the watercolors. And I would have a, maybe an, an idea of like where I would start with a stroke and, um, and let that kind of take off on its own and then come back later as it dried and go back and work more things into it. And a lot of these are just from, uh, from memory, from places maybe I've seen or been. Um, and a lot of the images, I mean, you know, hopefully maybe when you look at some of them, you might think of, you know, maybe something you saw or remember from your childhood or uh, when I grew up, I had a creek and a pond and a swamp and a woods. And so I spent a lot of time, you know, so a lot of these images kind of I can tend to flash back on certain things um, that they kind of draw to. Yeah. Then these series kind of just started into doing this kind of perspective. Because I'm always fascinated with the uh, these ditches and creeks and then that canals and so this is kind of inspired from that. And these, you know, when I look back at these now, it's like, I don't even remember how this came about. You know, some of these, um, the way this looks like the water in the foreground, that's all accidental. It's just the way the water moved on the paper. Sometimes I'd move it a little bit. Um, and then when you come back later and it's dried, you go, wow, that, I don't remember that. That's kind of cool. So um, these were pretty exciting and it was kind of nice to be like, I was kind of like in a zone doing these. Um, I'd walk through the house and I'd just sit down for a few minutes and start something with like, you know, I could do this, do this brush like this and then come back later and do a couple a day or something like that. I ended up doing about 150 of these, I think, and edited down to about 40, 48, something like that, that I felt kind of worked. Um, and then I just hit a wall. I um, couldn't do it anymore. It was like, I'd sit down, I'm like, I got nothing, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of interesting how that, it just kind of comes to you um, in this burst you're like in this zone and, um, and you just ride it, you just go with it and, and then it's gone. It's just, cause I've sat down to try to do, do some other things with it and yeah, it's just not happening. So, you know, at that point you just walk away from it and maybe something else will inspire, you know, come out of it, but so, I'll get to these, I'll pass through these. <clears throat> Let me jump to that. I 
Let me jump ahead here for a second and see. So I guess I could say um, I've probably been doing photography for oh probably over 40 years I guess and uh, yeah let's see <clears throat> so these were kind of created this year and it's still working in the same space um, around that pond and around those fields and uh, this also the rest of these will be like we're all shot with a Canon uh, Mark III and um, 5D Mark III. So what what these are? Everything's done in camera. So I'm shooting like probably late afternoon, and I've got a neutral density filter over the lens, and I'm shooting at about a half a second and the lens is stopped down to like f22 so so i know kind of the space that i want to be in and i know how the lights looking i know how these trees are kind of looking and as you're shooting it's kind of almost a dance you just move you're just like there's a half second and so you're moving just a slight movement to get this motion and it creates a really interesting abstract and uh, the only thing I plan out is is having a location in mind. Um, a lot of times the trees, where they have a lot of negative space around them, um, the foliage in the foreground creates a whole different type of thing. Um, the grain is really nice. I love how the grain comes up. So this is more later than the... When we first started doing this, well, the show was scheduled to go up a year ago and got can't, got postponed. So I was doing the early work before that. So when we canceled the show, I had I had everything ready to go out the door. So then Paul says, well, let's just postpone for COVID and all that. So I, I put everything on the show and didn't look at it for a year. So in the meantime, I kept shooting, you know, this, this was kind of a new direction and then the black and white film. Um, again, this is still in, in, in basically my backyard. Yeah. It would take maybe six or eight tries to kind of get the just right amount of, um, movement. So it's not too, too much. So you can still kind of see what things are. Um, and it's not too literal. And this was just, I was walking down into the field. And these weeds were, had this really beautiful red berries on them or something. I don't know what it was. It was late fall. And they added a nice texture in there. Which was kind of cool. So I love like this kind of edge of edge of the woods type stuff. And this one's a little more literal where you can kind of tell, you know, it's yeah. But the colors are really fascinating too from them the different kinds of mold or fungus or you know. Yeah. And this <coughs> I love this kind of stuff because I knew um, down in the field where I was, I mean, like behind me is like an open field and the neighbor, there's a, a tore down fence right in front of me. And the, beyond that, this neighbor owns this property. So it's probably about 40 acres maybe. And they used to farm it and they quit farming it. So over time, it's just grown, grown up with these little poplars and maples. And it's got this real ominous darkness to it. So when you go down there, any time of day, if it's just bright sunlight, noon or whatever, it's, you stand there and look into those trees and it's, 
it just goes completely dark. And um, so I like that. It has this sort of scary feel about it. I didn't go into it. I stood right there and took pictures. I didn't, I didn't go any farther into the woods with it. But I love the way that looks. So there's things like that in your mind. I remember that, and I thought, oh, yeah, I could go down there and see what that looks like um, with this technique. Um, And what was interesting too was not, some days, are, this was probably overcast too, it was probably overcast day when I shot these. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and this was late, late afternoon. <clears throat> what was interesting too is what and I'll get to the ones at Noble Park. Yeah. That's up Jefferson Street. Yeah. This is in Noble Park. And I, I'll shot, I'll, this is kind of in reverse. I've got the fall shots in here now. But um, this is on the east side of the park, down AC Mathis Drive. And I love looking into that space, the trees, uh, these big oak trees and that negative space, and they keep all the underbrush down. So you have this beautiful little landscape that I drive by every day. And I thought, oh, that could be nice. So this particular shot here was like noon. So the light was like coming straight down into the, you know, through the trees. Um, so, I mean, one, you know, it's like there are no rules. You know, people say, uh, well, the best time of day to shoot is before 11 and after 2. And, yeah, you know, that, that is if you're doing certain things. But, you know, learn that and then break the rules. There's no, you know, make, make work wherever you are. Um, So, I, yeah, I just kind of got, like, carried away. <laughs> but not everything, you know, created an image, I mean, that you, that you wanted. You still have to kind of really kind of study the shapes and the light and, and, you know, see what things contrast with each other. Um, so it's still like painting or like, uh, like anything else. Um, and this was back in Noble Park during the, during the summer, yeah. Yeah, I love the way that bark, that texture looks. Nice. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at currently. Um, and I don't know, anybody else have any questions or? Well, I think maybe you asked about the sort of mindset shooting on during the lockdowns and such, and then how maybe coming out of that has influenced what you're doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, you get to, again, it's kind of back to that thing where you hit that zone, you know, where you've kind of done, done you know, this, and you you got to move on. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I think it's just a matter of continuing to look at the landscapes and continuing to go into the woods. Sometimes you, I, I don't take pictures. I just like to be, be there in, in the moment. And, you know, it's, I got to thinking about it the other day too. It's like when I catch myself, and I'm probably a lot of you are the same way, I'm probably every 15 seconds, I'm thinking visually. I'm thinking about, oh, yeah. And sometimes at night, you're laying there and you go, oh, man, I could do that with this. So it's constantly all day long, you're thinking about this or that, or I could take these images and, and do this. Or with the watercolors, I already started thinking about a new technique or a new idea I wanted to try with the, 
the leaves again and the watercolors. Um, so I think all that from the pandemic, pandemic really kind of made me focus and made me, you know, it forced you to be still, it forced you to be quiet and really take in things. Um, so that was exciting because like, like I, t I was telling Paul one day, once we, once we put this work on the shelf and then when I came in to hang it, I said, man, I've like created two more portfolios since this. So, so it kept kind of building and layering to, to new things. And then with the, you know, the, the dark room back open again, that's, you know, created more possibilities. Um, I like this sort of in camera movement. Everything in here is like on these images are all in camera. There's no Photoshop, you know, work on this or anything. Uh, oh, I guess there was a couple more in there. Yeah. Um, well, and of course, I guess part of it too, I, I'll share this, I guess, because a big part of the pandemic, the show, the, originally the show was supposed to go up a year ago, January. So the July before that, I had a massive heart attack and cardiac arrest. And I was right in the middle of putting this show together. So I thought, man, that's, that's a bummer. That's going to slow things down. So I recovered from that and continued working on framing and building the frame, which became like therapy, uh, building these frames. Um, and then we canceled the show coming up in January for COVID. And then I had heart surgery. So that gave me another downtime, recovery time. So the whole time I'm doing that, I'm painting these, these watercolors and recovering from everything. So, so between the pandemic and recovering from health issues, it all kind of just enhanced, I guess, the creativity um, because I thought, well, what else am I going to do? I can't just sit here and mope or, you know, be, be upset because, you know, COVID and everything else. So it just really motivated me creatively to, uh, continue and um, um, even now I'm like ready you know just like I feel like you know just in the zone to really continue it and keep it going but that kind of makes sense to answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah um, so yeah so and again last night I was experimenting <clears throat> with some more stuff and it wasn't working. So I'm like, ah, you know, give it a rest. Don't force it. So anyway, yeah. Anybody else got? I'm crazy to take a moment to mention that Glenn is a considerably successful commercial photographer in addition to the things that he does create for fine art. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you can see more work, you know, that's beyond this to earlier work, um, portraits and, you know, some other concept things at glennhallphotography.com. So I get, you know, just check out the website. So there's some things there. And when we post this YouTube video or whatever we do with this online, um, you'll have the opportunity to more closely see and study these images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I hope. It, like I said, you know, I feel like, you know, every time I look at them, I'll see something different or I see something I didn't see before. Um, and even after we, even after they'd sat on the shelf for a year and we brought them in, I thought, oh man, am I going to like this? Am I, gonna, am I still going to be excited about it? And once we started into it and hanging it, I thought, okay, yeah, it's nice. I, I like it. I'm happy. I'm pleased you know, to see the work again. So, um, and that's, that's the key thing. I mean, you, you really, you're not, you know, you're not doing the work for, you know, other people or your family or whatever. It's really for you, what you get out of it and what that moment that you feel, you know, emotion. And if, you know, if you can make somebody else feel that too, or feel something totally opposite or other than what you feel, then that's great. That's a bonus. But um, the need to create and the need to continue working like that. Uh, it's just innate. It's like breathing. Um, like I said, it's like 
it just doesn't go away. It's like a, it's like a curse. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Oh yeah. Um, while the pond was kind of still in its, you know, prime stage there, I kind of wanted to do something, you know, visually, you know, with the video work. So um, that first part of the video is shot real close up with the 5D. And then um, the water's not real deep. So, it, you know, it didn't get the, the results I was hoping, but it still had an interesting quality to it. I, I just had a GoPro um, on the end of a like a stick or a monopod and then I was moving the GoPro around. I knew I wanted a late afternoon light to backlight the, the pond. And um, so there were some nice prizes because I like the fact that you can't, you can't really see what the GoPro is seeing. You're just kind of feeling and moving the camera where you kind of think there may be an image. Um, and then so when you bring it up into video and start to edit, there's some nice surprises that happen. So, yeah, kind of neat. Um, did that answer your question about the watercolors more? Or? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Yeah, thank you all.